Well, I actually think it's a great time for storytelling for nonprofits. Sure, I'm Joy Portella and I'm the Director of Communications for Mercy Corps. Um, it's something that's developed over time. It predates me, to be honest. I've been with the organization about four years, and the emphasis on storytelling, very personal storytelling of beneficiaries in particular, had already been firmly in ingrained in the organization before I came on. I think a lot of that has to do with the evolution of web-based uh, fundraising, and Mercy Corps was without exaggeration, one of the leaders, at least in our sector, of international development in terms of raising funds on the web. Um, we quickly captured uh, a higher proportion of our revenues coming from web-based donations than other organizations of our ilk. And a lot of that has to do with the ability to tell personal stories online. Uh, people just relate to them a lot more than they do to programmatic descriptions, for sure. Um, one of the latest evolutions of our storytelling work, which probably came to pass in the last year and a half or so, has been the Mercy Corps blog, which if, if you look at the home page of the website, we have staff from all over the world contributing stories of what they do every day and what they see on the ground and people they meet. Um, and it, it's a really great tool to get some of those hidden stories from the field surfaced. It is everybody. We try to get everybody. Um, and it's it's been a really interesting process. The gentleman who started the blog, uh, a guy named Roger Burks, who's based out in Atlanta, uh, it was his baby. And when he first came to us and said, I want to start this blog, we're going to get everyone at Mercy Corps to contribute. And it's going to be this really robust um, content piece that's going to engage our donors in a very meaningful way. And I thought, no way is he going to get these program people from the field to do this because it's just not the way most of our program staff operate. So Joy thought. Um, what I didn't realize is that there are a lot of people, program folks, technical ex experts, other, who really do want to tell stories and are good at it. Um, who just needed to be tapped into and needed a little bit of guidance. So one of the things that Roger does, again our, our blog guru, is that he will go around the world um, two or three times a year and he'll hold regional trainings. Um, for example, he did one out in Uganda last fall where folks from all over uh, Africa came in and learned about the blog, did a storytelling exercise, did a photo exercise, spent a few days with Roger and really learned how to craft what we consider to be a Mercy Corps story, which isn't really a Mercy Corps branded story, it's just the kind of story we know speaks to people. And they spend a few days doing that, and then Roger nurtures that core of storytellers, and they become blog contributors. Story. Uh, Mercy Corps often cites a column, uh, which I can't remember the details of it, by Nick Kristoff, who of course is the god of, of a lot of people in, in our sector, um, where he talks about the power of telling a story of one person and how donors and supporters respond to that single story. And as soon as you introduce more people, even if it's just one other person, the response of donors goes way down. Um, so you really have to focus on that on that one person, if you can, um, and just find out the some of the details of their life. You know, what kind of challenges are they facing? Um, how are they getting by? How has whatever programmatic intervention Mercy Corps um, has put into place, how's that helping them? What do they hope for in the future? What's their family like? How's their family been impacted by what's going on? Because th those are all things that people can really relate to. And at least in our sector, in international development, that relatability is the challenge that we're often trying to overcome. Yeah. You know, most of our stories, if, if you look online um, at mercycorps.org and kind of look at our classic stories, they're much like very good news stories. They lead with that one person, and then you kind of zoom out to the to the broader issue. If, if it's just that one person and that's it, then you have a huge missed opportunity to tell the story about what you're doing as an organization, um, what the bigger problems is problems are, how your intervention matters. Um, so you really have to bring it back to, okay, so Sally is in this village in Niger, not to pick on Niger. Um, there, you know, her family's hungry. She hasn't eaten three meals a day or two meals a day in however long. Um, her plight is, you know, this is something that people are going through across Niger. Um, it's been a very hard season. 
uh, lots of drought, impending famine, here's what we're doing about it, here's how you can help. And, and it's got to be that kind of zoom out and end with how you can help, because you don't want it to be all about the problem either. You've got to offer some kind of solution and some way that people can get involved. And most, most of the time that's, that's a donation ask, um, though it certainly doesn't have to be. I mean, if you're more activism oriented, issue oriented as an organization, then it might be a different call to action. If you're more of an advocacy oriented organization, then it might be a different action at the end. Um, it all depends on what you're trying to get people to do. You know, there are challenges and there are opportunities, as with everything. Uh, Facebook, for example, has been a good opportunity for us to surface some of our stories, um, which we do. If, I mean, if you look at our Facebook feed, we'll often surface things that are uh, stories that are great uh, beneficiary or staff stories, usually that often have uh, relevance to something that's going on in the headlines. A lot of content, for example, in Libya and Egypt and um, Japan have recently been surfaced via our, our Facebook page. It also allows us in some of the areas of the world that are you know, neglected crises or emergencies to really push out more of the content around those issues. I'm thinking of a lot of um, problems that are going on in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, for example, that often don't get a lot of traditional media attention, mainly because there aren't many reporters left in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, but it, it gives us a vehicle to really push out our own news to broader communities via social media, which is great. Um, the challenge, I think, with social media, particularly with something like Twitter, is that it's so quick and fast and short uh, that, again, it allows you to surface content in a new way and reach people in a new way. But you can't really tell a compelling narrative in 140 characters, right? You can you can try to uh, reference a compelling narrative in 140 characters, uh, but you you just don't have that kind of substantive storytelling um, in the same way that you would even with with a really compelling web piece. I mean, not to mention a, a kind of more traditional media narrative piece. It's um it's different. So you can surface stuff, but you can't tell the same kind of stories. I actually think it's a great time for storytelling for nonprofits. Um, you know, it's if you come from the traditional media world of you know, public relations, pitching stories, whatever. I think it's as I do. It's it's easy on one level to get discouraged because you're looking at an international media landscape that's becoming. Um, smaller and smaller, at least in terms of American journalists covering international issues, and particularly in areas of the world um, that are poor and oppressed, you have fewer and fewer journalists out there telling good, rich stories. And, and I think that's a shame on, on a lot of levels. Um, but it also means that there's a little more room for nonprofits and other organizations to tell their own stories. And if you can figure out ways to push out those stories, um, whether it's social media or getting high profile friends to push out your stories or whatever, um, I, I think that people, you'll be able to get more eyes on, on your story than you would have been able to do five or certainly ten years ago. Um, and very often, uh, traditional media will now pick up nonprofit stories um, from around the world in a way that they wouldn't have done even two years ago. I mean, the trick there is, uh, I think, building relationships with some of these media outlets that realize, hey, we don't have someone in Niger who can tell this story, but we think it's really interesting. So yeah, maybe we'll pick up your content. And we wouldn't have been willing to do this earlier, but we'll do it. Um, the other trick on that is making your content such that it really is storytelling and then uh, zooming out and looking at an issue rather than making it all about a marketing piece for your organization. Mm -hmm.